Hi, I'm Jody Cohn, your host, and I'm so honored to be joined by Dr. Marcel Pick. She is an OBGYN nurse practitioner who is passionate about transforming the way women experience healthcare through an integrative approach. Marcel is currently a faculty member at the Institute of Functional Medicine and has served as a medical advisor to Healthy Living Magazine. She lectures on a variety of topics, including weight loss, resilience, infertility, stress and illness, and adrenal dysfunction. She is the author of several best-selling books, including Is It Me or My Adrenals, which we'll discuss today, and has appeared on Dr. Oz, Fox, and her PBS special was seen by millions. Welcome, Marcel. It's a thank pleasure you so to have much. you. Thank you. Thank you. So first question is kind of how do you define resilience? So um, I have for years been kind of wondering about that because everybody's a little bit different and we all have different stories. And what I say to people is, look, if you don't deal with your story, your story is going to deal with you. And the way that it comes out is if you had some type of resiliency support as you were younger. So I've been using the ACE study in my practice for a long time, which is you know, a study that was done by Folletti and I'm sure other people have talked about it here. So it's finding out what your ACE score is, but then also finding out what your resiliency score is. And what that means is, did you have a teacher that supported you? Did you have a neighbor that really told you how amazing you were? Did you, you know, have somebody in your life that really supported all of your health goals so that the trauma perhaps that you may have had as a kid didn't impact you as greatly biochemically and emotionally as it might have without that. And as we're adults, the question's going to be is, how able are we to get into that toolkit again to use those pieces of information? For example, if somebody feels like they're not enough and they were told that over and over again as a kid and they didn't have somebody to support them, that's going to be a rebound for them. So they need to find tools for themselves to have either affirmations or to use some support for neurotransmitters and they'd be really careful with their diet to get that resiliency back up. Because it is unfortunately inherent in how we grew up and what we learned as kids that affects our biochemistry as we get older and the piece that it affects so greatly is our cortisol level and our adrenal levels. And that plays out for example, if you feel like you're not enough, let's use that as a, as a term, and you grow up and you get in a relationship and you blame yourself because it ends and you're always going back to the same place. If you had some support as a kid and you're like, I know how to bounce back from this. I can kind of do that. I know my tools. You have some affirmations. You get over it very quickly. Other people don't and they worry and they think about it all the time or they're perfectionistic and they think about it all the time. Their cortisol levels go up. And unfortunately, when that happens, it causes huge amounts of adrenal dysfunction that then has major, major physical manifestations. I love this. So you're really addressing the adrenals at the root cause, not just let's help your adrenals release more cortisol and other hormones, but let's figure out why they're over. So was, can you elaborate on that? So much true, because here's what we find is that I have been doing adrenal um, you know, support in my practice for 40 years. Right. What I find is the same people come back and back and back. And the reason is that they're not addressing that issue that's keeping them stuck in that adrenal fatigue. Does that make sense? Completely. If you're someone who's a perfectionist, or if you're someone who has no resilience and you get in relationships and you're always blaming yourself, or if I'd only done that differently, if I'd only tried that, if I'd only whatever, then that takes you down the bunny hole, which causes the cortisol levels to go back down in spite of the fact that you're on adrenal support, you know, definitely uh, any adaptogenic herbs. And I even use DHEA in my practice, pharmaceutical grade DHEA that I get at a compounding pharmacy. But quite honestly, Jody, it's not enough because you're always having that cortisol kind of pull you down a different pathway. So what I say to people, and I have an adrenal program, and what I say to people is, look, we have to start to understand that you have to start with yourself. You have to be kind, you have to be forgiving, you have to understand what is it that that's, is that message? If you grew up with a lot of abuse, for example, and you had a lot of trauma in the household, every time you hear a noise that's similar, <gasps> your body goes like that. And you're back down to, because your body doesn't know the difference between present day stress and past day stress. And what happens then is cortisol levels go screaming 
or sometimes they're very low because we don't have enough reserves. Now, what we don't talk about a lot is what happens when the adrenals are off. And here's the piece that's so important. I teach for the Institute of Functional Medicine, as you know, and I'm a stickler for research because I really want to see what the data is. So I'm a little bit of a geek in a kind of an alternative world too. And we know now more than we ever have before that when you have adrenal dysfunction, it increases autoimmune disorders. It suppresses your immune system. It causes your thyroid to not have that T3 that's active, which we need. It causes hormonal hell, I call it, because what happens is cholesterol normally makes our sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, and DHEA. If we have it being needed to make cortisol all the time, it says, forget it. We're bypassing the hormones because we can't live. We can live without the hormones. We can't live without cortisol. So that's when you see people with PMS because their progesterone levels are down, or you'll see cholesterol, I mean, uh, estrogen levels that are high, but they're normal. And the progesterone levels have plummeted PMS, perimenopausal symptoms, irregular periods, huge translation into low progesterone, low testosterone levels, lower estrogen levels. We also see that people have digestive issues because there's such a correlation with the microbiome and cortisol as well. So we can see now that there's a huge connection to our biochemistry from trauma and stress. I love that you're reverse engineering. If you have this symptom, it's because you're high cortisol and when cortisol is high, it dysregulates other things. And if you're high cortisol, taking it back a notch, here's why. Keep going, that's amazing. Absolutely. And you know, for the longest time, we would say to people in conventional medicine, oh, for God's sakes, it happened yesterday. Don't worry about it, you know? And it's like, right. And now what we know is that the biochemistry of the body is very associated with those connections. And resiliency is the key here. Because if you had a tremendous amount of trauma, and what I loved about what you said is that's why siblings are so different. If somebody didn't have that support network there for themselves, that trauma was internalized and it gets reinvigorated uh, as you will on a regular basis as you become an adult. Yeah, and one of the things that, I mean, it, this is so um, serendipitous because I'm actually, I have the perfectionist program. I have the good girl program. I apologize when it's raining, you know, and just even being aware of that and kind of unpacking that and moving through that. How do you help people with that process? You know, the first part is to understand it, you know, and then do things that you need to do. You know, I have 21 day programs, for example, in which I say, look, we're going to start today. And I want you to um, just begin by thinking of three wonderful things that are new that happened today. Not just a gratitude journal, but just to really get in the habit of looking at the wonders that are around you. Um, journaling for yourself. It doesn't have to be long, you know, two minutes. Some type of meditation or doing 777 seven, seven breathing. Inhale for seven, hold for seven, exhale for seven, seven times. And that you then become into, into a habit of, oh, this is how I kind of do that on a regular basis getting, you know, and then we can get a little bit more aggressive, making sure that there's no, you know, toxic chemicals on their face and their skin and that their perhaps dopamine levels are normal. We look at their neurotransmitters because almost always they're off. So there's many different ways we can do it. And then diet, food is the most powerful that we have. So cutting back on sugar and being loving with yourself. If you make a mistake, it's like, oops, okay, I'll change it next time. And that's the most important part for the perfectionists. And oftentimes they did it to survive and be okay as a kid. And we have these amazing mechanisms that help us survive, thank God we had them. The problem is that we're older, they don't work for us anymore. In fact, they work against us. So it's being you know, honest with yourself and saying, oops, I've got some issues, don't we all? And I need to work on them. So what, how do I unpack them? And if I can't do it myself, how do I find somebody that can work with me? And just knowing you can turn it around, no matter how old you are, no matter what's going on, you can change that type pattern of behavior. Right. And let's, let's kind of talk about, you know, just walking people through the process, you know, um, something goes wrong. It's not even something we're responsible for, but 
we feel bad about it. We blame ourselves. Then can we talk about the whole hypothalamus pituitary axis stress response and how that unravels in the body? Sure. So what happens then is as, as you go down that bunny hole, cortisol is released. And oftentimes if it's been going on for too long, you have cortisol up, 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 up. And for some people that comes down. Now, what are the symptoms you might experience? Fatigue, brain fog, inability to cope because the DHEA levels come down. When you don't have enough DHEA, you have um, what I call road rage. You kind of react like this when it should just be like this. And you, you don't have a sense of balance. So it's really finding those tools for yourself that calm you down. I'm a ballroom dancer, so ballroom dancing is my thing. And you know, if I'm on the dance floor, I can't think of anything else because I'm dancing. And if I forget, I think I'll be tripping or something like that. So finding out that place for you, maybe it's meditation, maybe it's yoga, maybe it's walking in the garden, maybe it's gardening, maybe it's knitting, maybe it's cross stitch, maybe it's for guys that go into the gym, whatever it is, finding that tool for you that helps you so that we can get that cortisol level down. And here's the truth, you know, Jody, if people don't begin to understand where that stressor is coming from. It could be physical. They could have Lyme disease and that's going to cause stress too or something else. Um, If they don't address that, at the same time, they're on the adaptogenic herbs and the DHEA and the supplement support. What happens is the cortisol level continues to be a problem. And then I'll do my, my cortisol levels on my patients and they look almost the same as they did before. So it's like, wait a minute, I, you know, I talk to people in my office quite often and it's like, all right, how hard, you know, how much stress do you have? Oh, I don't really have any. And then I start asking the questions, well, how hard are you on yourself? Well, on a scale of one to 10, a nine, that is the piece that you're talking about is that it's always my fault. I always did it wrong. You know, and if anything happens, you know, the, the look on our faces, cause some, I did something. That's all about um, you taking it too personally and finding then strategies and doing some work. You can do emotional freedom technique. You can do uh, EMDR. You can do many different types of body work that can help you no longer be in that place. And you just have to remind yourself of the neocortex, say, oh, that's old stuff. That's not today. The worst is over. This is what's going forward now. Yeah, and and in terms of resilience, can you kind of talk about how the adrenals support our resilience and, and the more we kind of help to like the, the benefit of, you know, doing this work and, and moving yes. through it. So, you know, as I mentioned, when you have cortisol levels that are off, what happens is that you have a feedback system that creates a lot of havoc in the body from digestion to thyroid, to hormonal imbalance, to autoimmune disorders, to immune dysfunction. As we get the body to be less reactive, as we get the body to start to understand the worst is over, you know, I can now have a normal life without being in overreactivity. And the adaptogenic herbs can be immensely helpful and DHEA can be immensely helpful. And I might use other hormones as well, depending upon what's going on. What we find then is that there's that balance that comes as long as we're not always in overdrive or perfectionism or any of those you know, continued problems, we can gain uh, enormous changes that sustain us for the rest of our lives. And one thing that um, I've always been curious about, cortisol and inflammation, can you kind of explain the connection there? Absolutely. You know, a little uh, cortisol we have to have. We cannot leave that without, uh, we can't live without our, our adrenals. You know, if we're being chased by a tiger 400 years ago, <laughs> and up, we either got killed by the tiger or, you know, we are kind of gone back in, in, in life again, we partying and cortisol came back down. That isn't the type of life we have anymore. You know, we're seeing things that are going on TV, we're, we're watching the news, we're worried about the pandemic, where, you know, all those kinds of things. We have kids, we, you know, we've got a job, we, and we're multi A puppy. <laughs> cute, oh my yeah. God, what kind of puppy is it? He's a Havanese, he's nine weeks old. <laughs> oh my God, he's so cute. Yeah, oh yeah but not sleeping, so therefore high That's cortisol. <laughs> Exactly. So what happens then is that we have to kind of take charge of our lives in some ways by saying, I'm turning that, I'm not going to watch the news. I'm going to take, you know, um, uh, 
any kind of sabbatical for my computers and from all my, you know, my tech stuff, my Wi-Fi. We are mindful of the food that we eat. We're mindful of the thoughts that we think. All of those play together because that's ultimately what feeds cortisol level. Now, cortisol, when we have too much, is an inflammatory hormone, okay? We want, we need to have some. We cannot live without just a, a bit of cortisol. But when we have too much for too long, it does contribute to inflammation. Now, what women experience tremendously is when their cortisol levels are up and their adrenals are not functioning properly, they cannot lose weight. No matter how little they eat, no matter how much exercise they have, their body just goes, girlfriend, not going to happen. And it happens for men too, but I'm more familiar with women. And they get so frustrated because they're doing everything right. Right. The body's saying, no, I'm storing these calories for a rainy day. I don't know what you're going to do next to me. So I oftentimes will have people go on keto, not to lose weight, but keto to get them out of the insulin resistance because that's exactly what's happened. The insulin resistance has started and the body locks down. And no matter what, you won't be able to lose the weight. Can you can you kind of explain, unravel um, how high cortisol levels contributes to insulin resistance for people that might not? So if you imagine that the body's under assault and it's, it's having a lot kind of coming at it. And if you have high cortisol, that war that we're talking about 500 years ago, the body goes, whoops. So you don't need as much food. You don't sleep at night. You sure don't have a sex drive. You may empty your bowels and your body goes into protect. But it also goes into a mode in which it says, this might be my last calorie. Might be my last calorie. So I'm going to store everything and there's no way I'm going to let it go because I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Now that was great 400 years ago. It doesn't serve us anymore. And our body's still responding in that primitive response. So it goes into lockdown. And what happens then is it doesn't matter how little you eat. The body says, oops, this could be my last calorie. So I'm going to store it and I'm not going to be, let go of any of it. We have to stabilize that by doing keto. The keto is a fantastic way to do that. And um, many times people don't eat breakfast. I'm not recommending that for people that have very significant adrenal dysfunction. I make sure that they have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and sometimes even snacks in between, only to get them out of the insulin resistance. Right. And, and for people, listeners who aren't familiar with keto, it's a high fat, low carbohydrate diet, which can you explain why that's beneficial to kind of unravel insulin resistance? Yeah. So what we know is I don't like people using a lot of saturated fat. I'm not a big fan of that for keto. I like to have it be really good quality fats like avocado, olive oil, you know, nuts and seeds. And what that does is it helps the body get nutrients. And, and also um, when you're doing lots of carbohydrates, that gets, no matter what the carbohydrates are, it gets converted to sugar. And so what yeah. happens then is that really um, implodes physically for you. And what happens then is it makes the insulin resistance actually worse as opposed to better. So by cutting back on the carbohydrates, you're supporting the biochemistry of the body and you're helping the body kind of come into this, ah, she's going to feed me state. And then your body is no longer as locked down into that insulin resistance as it was before. Yeah, someone once said that um, if you think of building a fire, carbohydrates are like the kindling and uh, fat and um, protein is the, more of the slow burning log. So it doesn't, you don't have the roller coaster spikes. And that's what you want. And you're, especially when you're, you know, in that position of having a lot of stress, you want to be able to have that kind of stabilization. For that what are some other strategies that, that are highly effective? Like if people are listening and they're like, oh my gosh, that's me. How do I unravel this? What, what else, um, you know? Yeah, I mean, there's many ways to do it. I, I am a big fan of getting it tested. And the reason for that is I've been surprised. I thought somebody was going to be low all day and they're high all day. So I'm going to use different nutrients to support them. And it's also fun for them to be able to see, wow, look, it is changing. I am making a difference in quickness. What, what test do you advise? Do you like the saliva test, the Dutch I test? Like the yeah. Okay. I, like the test. I mean, the Dutch test you can do as well. I've, I've been using the saliva test probably for 30 years, so I'm pretty familiar with it. And um, I also like to do a gliadin profile because that gives me information to if that person is having a gluten sensitivity that may be contributing to the adrenals as well. And um, I oftentimes like to see DHEA levels as well. And if I can't get it in the saliva, I'll get it in the blood with a DHEA-S level. So I know whether I need to support the biochemistry with DHEA or not. 
And when I do that, then I'll use nutrients specific to their test results. And then we'll talk about all the pieces, the ACE score, the resiliency score, you know, what are some things that they perhaps can do differently? Can they, if they notice that they're starting to say things like women are horrible about being negative about themselves. Oh my God, my hair today or my arms or my whatever they do. And yeah. that, that, that's really negative thinking. So I really try to help them you know, change and do the media cortex and even do a pause of the thought that they had and to have another thought. You know, we're from the biology of belief by Bruce Lipton. We know our thoughts predict our behavior and our biochemistry. So it's doing everything in your power to change that dynamic, even though you were told as a kid, perhaps you were just nothing. And it's like, no, 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 no. And what I sometimes will have people do is I'll have them have their girlfriends or friends tell them all the things, or, you know, 10 things they love about them. And I'll put them on an index card and I'll have them laminate that card. And every time they have that thought coming up about, you know, it's my fault. It's this is like, no, 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 look at this. This is what's the truth. And sometimes put it on their refrigerator. So that you have a concept of what's reality and what's not, because all of that is also dependent upon how much resiliency you had as a kid. And that sets the framework for what your thoughts are later. I love that. So you're kind of hitting it from all angles. You're hitting it from diet. You're hitting it from really addressing um, the supplements. What, what about sleep? Talk to oh, me a little bit about. God, oh my God, sleep is huge. Yeah. So, you don't and, and exercise and you know, doing something that you love being out in nature going outside with your feet planted on the floor being mindful of wi-fi i mean these are all part you know making sure you don't have any chemicals on your skin avoiding you know toxic foods you know the, the toxic 12 but sleep is crucial and the problem that many people have is when they have adrenal dysfunction is their cortisol levels are up at night so they can't sleep and they go to bed at a reasonable time and they're just tossing and turning or they fall asleep and wake up and that oftentimes is a cortisol issue. So I'll put them on something like phosphatidylserine that brings cortisol levels down because it's not always a melatonin issue. And that is very, very helpful in getting their uh, support for their adrenals. Yeah, I, I talk about that a lot, the relationship between cortisol and melatonin. Can you explain that a little bit and how phosphatidylserine helps to bring down the cortisol levels? Sure, it's an adaptogenic herb. And it's specifically for high cortisol levels. So if I have somebody that has high cortisol levels at night, you really can't sleep. No matter what you try to do, you're exhausted. So I call them wired and tired. Um, and they can't get to sleep. And that's one of the patterns that you see. They might be low all day long and then high at night. And they, that makes it even worse because they can't sleep and they get more exhausted. And they're like, I'm trying to go to bed on time. It's not working. So phosphatidylserine is an adaptogenic herb that pulls cortisol levels down. Now, there are times that we need melatonin. Melatonin is that, you know, the, um, the herb that really helps us kind of get to sleep when it's dark out. Yeah. You know, melatonin level, and as we get older, we have less melatonin. And if you are someone that needs it, it works very effectively. And some people need, you know, one milligram, some people need three. And on one of my, um, when I did my uh, health talks, I talked to somebody who actually has as much as 200 milligrams a day. I don't recommend oh. that. But yeah, he uses huge amounts of melatonin. Well, it's, it's neuroprotective. Yeah. And, it, you know, there is kind of that antagonistic cortisol, melatonin. If cortisol is too high, you might need more. But I, I love that. And, and how do you support um, nocturnal hypoglycemia, the people that, you know, have the blood sugar dip during sleep and wake up around 1 a.m.? What I oftentimes will do is, is be, be mindful of what they're doing for carbohydrates. And that's the person I'll definitely have had had breakfast. And again, those are oftentimes the people that have a lot of internal stress that's going on. So I'll have them do some journaling beforehand. I'll have them have a book by their bedside and have some kind of twilight, no bright light. So they can write down some of the things that are going on for them. Because more often than not, they're having some dreams that are really causing some havoc with the body that increases cortisol, that increases then the blood sugar load. Because remember the adrenals are directly responsible for our glucose control. And they're also directly responsible for fluid retention. So those two things are, uh, they go hand in hand. Oh, can you speak to that a little bit? Fluid retention and aldosterone, like for people that might be puffy or, or might not have known that connection? Yeah. So there's two major components to the adrenal function. There's many things that they do, as I mentioned before, but they're really responsible for kind of the aldosterone fluid kind of normalization in the body and also for glucose regulation. 
So if you have problems with your glucose level, it is probably also partly related to adrenals. And that's what we in conventional medicine never talk about. Also for fluid retention, the same thing. Now, can foods do it? Absolutely. Can blood pressure do it? Absolutely. Can cardiovascular issues do it? Absolutely, of course. And you get those checked out first. But then the other thing is, you know, what's happening in your dreams? What's going on at night that may be giving you keys to what may be happening with you emotionally that may be contributing to cortisol going up and may contribute to that food retention as well. So we need to always be looking, you know, I practice functional medicine. I'm always looking at all the pieces to the puzzle. It's not just one situation. It's like, okay, what's going on for you? Is it related to this or this or this? And how do we pull it, you know, pull it all together? Well, and you've, you've been so generous and shared so many pieces of the puzzle. Is there anything related to resilience that we haven't touched upon that you'd like to add? Um, I, I guess the, the point that I want to add is that we all can change. We just have to understand what's keeping us stuck. And if we have adrenal issues, it's looking at how do we come out the other side and what is specific to you? Because we're all different. We all have different stories. Just like you said, the siblings, you know, we have different resilience support as kids. So it's finding out what works for you and, and working with someone so that you can figure it out because you all deserve to feel amazing. So if people want to work with you, how can they find out more? Sure. So um, I have a website, marcelpick.com, and um, everything is pretty much there. I also have a weight loss program called Women's Transformation Center that they can learn about uh, weight loss because so many people struggle with that when they have a green issues too. Well, thank you so much. This was wonderful. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Not a problem. Thank you.